is lesson 3.4, graphing linear equations in standard form. This is page 130 of your book. In this lesson, you will learn how to graph equations of horizontal and vertical lines. You will learn how to graph equations in standard form using intercepts. And you will learn how to use linear equations in standard form to solve real life problems. Let's talk about two basic equations that give you two basic lines, horizontal and vertical lines. Remember, horizontal is left to right, vertical is up and down. The standard form of a linear equation is AX plus BY equals C, where A, B, and C are real numbers and A and B are not both zero. That might sound confusing. Here's all that's saying. A standard form equation would look something like this, where here A is 3, B would be a 2, and C would be a 10. Okay? Now these numbers A, and A, B, and C have to be real. Okay? That means they could be positives, negatives, fractional. So let me just make another example. Like negative 3x minus 5y equals 20, that would also be in standard form. Those are real numbers. A and B can't both be 0. Okay, so one of them could be 0, the other one then can't. So here would be an example. Let's pretend that B was 0. Well, then I could maybe have an equation like 3x plus nothing equals 10, or let's say a was 0. That would mean that I'd have no a value. That would mean 2y, for example, could equal 10. So a or b could be 0, but not both. Now, if one of those are 0, you'll get a really basic equation. Consider what happens when a equals 0 or b equals 0. I'm going to read this even though it sounds wordy. When A equals 0, the equation becomes BY equals C or Y equals C over B. Because C over B is a constant, you can write Y equals B. Likewise, when B equals 0, the equation becomes AX equals C or X equals C over A, and you can write X equals A. Now, as a teacher, when I read that, it's even wordy and it sounds complicated. Here's all they're trying to tell you. They are, it's a wordy way of saying you can find x or y by solving a simple equation. Like, look here. This wording is saying that if 3x equals 10, I could divide both sides by 3 and figure out that x would be 10 thirds. That's what all this gibberish is telling me. Or, let's say I had 2y equals 10. I could quickly take 2y and divide by 2 on each side, and I would find out that y equals 5. That's what all of that is telling me. Okay? Let's talk about horizontal and vertical lines. The graph of y equals b is a horizontal line. The line passes through the point 0b. So, that's kind of abstract because they don't tell me what B is. Let's do a concrete example. Look down here. We're going to graph Y equals 4. Here's how you do it. You draw a horizontal line 4 units above the x-axis. You can see a picture of that right here. They just drew a horizontal line 4 units above the x-axis. Look at each of the points they labeled. Let me take a highlighter. Do you notice each of the points has a y value of 4? Doesn't that match what this says? y equals 4. Yeah, y always equals 4. Now, the vertical line. The graph of x equals a is a vertical line. The line passes through the point a comma 0. Now, again, that's kind of abstract. Let's look at a concrete example right here. Let's graph x equals negative 2. 
here's all you do. To draw that graph, you have a vertical line two units to the left of the y-axis. And you can see a picture of that right here. I want you to notice something. Do you notice how the equation was x equals negative 2? Look at each of the points that they labeled. Do you notice how x is always negative 2? So if I get confused on these, that's what I think about. I'm like, okay, when it's y equals 4, do I draw a horizontal line or a vertical line? Well, y always has to equal 4. So whatever line I draw, if I count the points or I look at the points, every y value better be a 4 because y equals 4. Or here, x equals negative 2. If I draw a line, every x value on that line better have a value of negative 2. I want you to pause the video and quickly graph these two linear equations. Okay, I'm back. So y equals negative 2.5 would be this, a horizontal line two and a half units below the origin. And again, you notice if I pick any point on this line, let me pick this point, wouldn't this point be 8 right two and a half down? Do you notice how the y value, let me highlight it, the y value is negative 2.5, just like the equation says it should be. The next line, x equals 5. Here's that. It's a vertical line 5 units to the right. And the same idea, let me just pick any random point on that line. Let's pick this one. Wouldn't that be the point 5, 10? Do you notice how the x value is 5, just like the equation says it should be? Okay, so that's how we can graph horizontal and vertical lines from those simple equations. Let's talk about using intercepts to graph linear equations. You can use the fact that two points determine a line to graph a linear equation. Two convenient points are the points where the graph crosses the axis, the y and x axis. These you should get in your notes. The x-intercept of the graph is the x-coordinate of a point where the graph crosses the x-axis. So the x-intercept is this point. I highlighted it. It's where the line crosses the x-axis. That's what x-intercept means. The y-intercept of the graph is the y-coordinate of the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. So I highlighted it here on this picture in the book. The y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis. To graph the linear equation from standard form, find the intercepts and draw the line that passes through the two intercepts. Now, this next thing is important. To find the x-intercept, let y equal 0. Now, I want you to notice that. You notice the x-intercept would be some point comma 0. y has to be 0 at the x-intercept. That's what this is saying right here. Whenever you have an x-intercept, y must be 0. So you can plug in 0 for y to find x. And conversely, you can find the x-intercept, I misspoke, the y-intercept I meant to say by letting x be 0. Do you notice the y-intercept, x has to be 0. It's on the y-axis. Okay? The y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So if you want to find y, plug in 0 for x, and if you want to find x, plug in 0 for y. Okay? Let's uh, do a practice problem together and look at that. Okay, let's use the intercepts to graph this equation. Well, that should be easy. Let's find the x-intercept first. Okay, to find the x-intercept, I'm going to substitute 0 in for y. So you can see that they did that here. 4 times 0 is nothing, so that disappears. So 3x equals 12. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. x must be a 4. Okay, let's find the y-intercept now. 
you substitute 0 in for x. So if I put 0 in for x, 3 times 0, that's nothing. 4y equals 12, that means y must have been a 3. Okay, now be careful. You plugged in 0 for y and found x was 4. That means 0 for y, x, 4. Do you notice they're graphing that point right here? You can see it right here. And then they plugged in 0 for x and got 3 for y. That's the point 0, 3. They graphed that right here. And now all you do is take your ruler out and draw a line in between. You just drew a line for that equation. I would like you to have you, I'd like you to try it out. I would like you to use the intercepts to graph these two equations. Make sure you label the points regarding or corresponding to the intercepts. Pause and do that. Okay, I'm back. For the first question, 2x minus y equals 4. Let's get the x-intercept. You notice how I plugged a 0 in for y. So 2x would equal 4, and I can divide each side by 2, and x would equal 2. So x, when I plug in 0 for y, x is a 2. Now let's get the y-intercept. Plug a 0 in for x. When you do that, you'll get negative y equals 4, which means y equals negative 4. So if you plug in 0 for x, y is a negative 4. Okay, graph both those points. So 2, 0 is here. Let me label it. And 0, negative 4 is down here. Let me label it. And then take a ruler out and draw the line connecting those two. That is the line for that problem. And for that second question, x plus 3y equals negative 9. To get the x-intercept, plug a 0 in for y, you would get x plus nothing equals negative 9, so x is negative 9. So you notice there's a 0 plugged in for y, x is a negative 9, and I can graph that here. And then to get the y-intercept, plug a 0 in for x. That would give you 3y equals negative 9. You can quickly divide each side by 3, and y is negative 3. So if you plug a 0 in for x, y is a negative 3. Let me plot that. Here's the point 0, negative 3. Let me label those points like the instructions said. And then take your ruler and draw a line through both those points. Put arrows at the end. Go across your paper like I'm doing here. There's your line for, those, for that. That standard form equation has that line or creates that line. Any points on this line would be true for that statement. Let's talk about solving a real life problem, modeling with mathematics. You are planning an award banquet for your school. You need to rent tables to seat 180 people. Tables come in two sizes, small tables sit, seat, sit, seat six people and large tables seat 10 people. The equation 6x plus 10y equals 180 models the situation where x is the number of small tables and y is the number of large tables. So they want us to graph the equation and interpret the intercepts. So you notice down here, um, they're graphing. Now a couple of complaints I have about this graph, which I would be grading you on. Number one, we should be labeling it. So let me do that. And you notice I titled my graph, table rentals for 180 people. The x-axis is the number of small tables. The y-axis is the number of large tables. Okay, let's graph it. So it, that should be easy. If you plug a 0 in for x, we can get the y-intercept. Let me do that first. The y-intercept, if I plug a 0 in for x, I get 10y equals 180. Divide each side by 10, y would be 18. So when x is 0, y is 18, which is why they plotted a point here. Now let's get the x-intercept. To do that, you plug a 0 in for y. So I have 6x plus nothing equals 180. And you can divide each side by 6. And x would equal 30, which gives me the point 30, 0, which you see they plotted here. Now, we're not going to draw a line with arrows for this because if you do, you're telling me we can go into the negatives for large tables or if we go this way, we get into the negatives for small tables. 
that wouldn't make any sense. We're only plotting the true values, which would be the positives. And then one last thing they want us to do, they, oh, forgot, interpret the intercepts. I need to do that. 018 means that we could rent zero large, I'm sorry, zero small tables and 18 large tables. 018 means zero small, 18 large. Or we could rent 30 zero, which means 30 small, zero large. That's when they say interpret the intercepts, they're asking you to determine what does that, what does 018 mean? It means zero small tables, 18 large. Find four possible solutions in the context of the problem. Well, we found two already. Here's one, here's two. Uh, let's find a couple more. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One, you can try looking at your graph. Sometimes that's convenient. Like it looks like there's one right here. That would be 912. And let's also look here. It looks like 20 and 6 would be another. Here's one more way you can quickly get solutions. And this is easy. You can use your calculator. Take the equation and quickly solve for y. This is what I would recommend you do. Okay, so let's solve for y. Peeling onion away. Take away the 6x. Then divide by the 10. Break that into separate fractions. 180 over 10 minus 6x over 10. You would get y equals 18 minus 3 fifths x. Now, take that and go to your calculator and type in that equation. If you don't want to do the work, this is let the calculator do the work. y equals 18 minus parentheses 3 fifths x. And now just go and make a table. And your calculator will give you all the pairs. Like here's 1, 0, 18. Or it could be 5, 15, 5 small, 15 large. Or what about 10 small, 12 large? Or what about 15 small, 9 large? You see how the calculator would do the work for you. It could be 20 small, 6 large. Or it could be 25 small, 3 large. All the way up to 30 small, 0 large. So that's how the calculator could do the same thing for you. If you just solve the equation for y, you can type it in and use your calculator table. I'm going to stop the video here. If you have questions, ask in class.